do you struggle to get out of bunkers? There you go. If so, we've got some foolproof tips to get you on your way to getting up and down out of the sand every time. So we're in the middle of the season. By this point, people are going to know if they're struggling in bunkers. Yeah. What's something they can do to just get out? Because I see so many people who would just be ecstatic if they would get the ball <laughs> in the middle of the green from the bunker every time. So if your objective is just to get out, the key to that is where you make contact with the sand. So what I see people do generally um, if they're struggling in bunkers in lessons, which is a week in, week out occurrence, is people, because they have this idea that they're trying to hit the sand before the ball and they know that they must hit the sand to get the ball out, their contact with the sand is, you know, six to eight inches behind the golf ball. And either what's going to happen there is you're going to take so much sand that the ball doesn't have enough power to get out or the club's going to bounce and then you're going to blade it either miles over the green or into the lip. And, it's basically like a two shot penalty whenever you're in a bunker. So the first thing to do to figure that out is draw a line in the sand, you know, about an inch behind the ball and hit a few shots, you know, with the balls sort of almost in a line and just get a feel for, you know, where does the, mm -hmm. where are you making contact with the sand? There you go. So uh, that one was a good one because it was, obviously did that deliberately um, because I've clearly hit um, about three or four inches behind the line and then there's not you know not enough speed to get the ball out of the bunker just by putting the line there you can like basically educate yourself on what's wrong with your bunker play generally people will need to get a nice wide base they need to sort of like lower themselves down they definitely have to lower their hands and that's going to help make a sort of almost like a shallow um, sand pattern as opposed to like a, a deep and a steep one and then from here most people just need to look at an inch behind the ball and make contact with that spot what's this stick for a drill i like in bunkers or just for low point in general is putting a stick in the ground as like a gauge for where the club's making contact with the ground so well people who are rubbish at bunkers generally hit the sand back here mm -hmm. trying to take too much sand so they'd like the contact point with the sand is like eight inches behind the ball so putting a stick four inches behind the ball or five inches behind the ball is just going to encourage you to make contact with the sand closer to the ball so that the ball sort of can get far enough. The danger of this drill... Oh, um, good. The danger of this drill <laughs> is someone's going to clatter the stick, in theory. That was quite nice. And you can sort of see how that's going to like force you to hit the sand Ahead of, you know, closer to the ball, ahead of the stick, as opposed to, you know, people who smash back here, mm -hmm. dig out half the sand in the bunker and. Don't get the ball out. Well, they don't get the ball out, and if they do get the ball out, they've got absolutely no control of how far they hit it. The place to start with bunker play, for me, for amateurs, is just hitting the sand in the same place every time and then learning to hit it softer and harder, but still hitting the same place in the sand every time. And then once you get good at that, you might say, well, now I want to hit like a low runner, so you might take a bit more sand or whatever. You might want to hit a high spinner, so you take a bit less. You've got to make contact with the sand in the right place every time, and that is generally about one inch behind the ball. So putting a stick two or three inches behind the ball, it's just going to encourage you to make contact closer to the ball and you'll get out every time that way. My other big bugbear in the bunkers <coughs> of people, I just hit my foot there is um, having a face that's too shut, having a face that's too closed, takes away all the bounce. Yeah, and then which, you just have no loft to get out of the bunker. Which is, well, it gives you no loft and it also means that the club digs as opposed to glides. People need to play with a massively open face. Now, I almost feel like I lay the club flat and then take my grip mm -hmm. to like give it maximum loft. And um, that freaks a lot of people out, but that's sort of just, I think, how you've got to start. You sort of, the classic drill that everyone's seen people do um, to get a feel for that open face is getting some sand on the club and feel like you're throwing it behind you because that you know just helps you maintain the loft in the backswing which then hopefully then re-deliver uh, into the ball. What I also think is important for that is you've actually got like a proper lob wedge there. Yes yeah yeah so I've this is a Callaway Jaws Raw 60 with the, the Z grind so you can easily open that up, the front edge isn't sticking up where I see so many amateurs who just have one wedge that matches their set. Yeah. And it's 
a chunky game improvement console, yeah. which is obviously fine for hitting full shots, but then you try open it up here and like you you're basically hitting it with the front of the cup, but you can't. Yeah, it's basically it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you've got like a Paradigm X irons and you've got a Paradigm X sand wedge, that isn't really a sand wedge. It, you know, A doesn't have enough loft, and B, like you say, you can't open it up and it still sort of sit properly on the ground. Yeah, so I always think someone should have like one specialised wedge like this. And even if you just like use it in bunkers and for short chip shots, yeah. it's actually giving you that finesse around the greens, which you obviously want the forgiveness that the Paradigms, or the Paradigm X is going to give you from long range, but yeah. it's not necessarily for this shot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you want to get that face nice and open. Um, so it basically sits flat. You want to feel like you're almost adding loft, maybe even cupping the wrist on the way back to give you like maximum loft. And then we're just trying to deliver that into the sand an inch behind the ball. And that will, you know, get you out every time. The only other thing, which is sort of like the slight next step above would be getting out the sand properly. So I see loads of people who are thinking, right, I've got to take the sand before the ball, fine. And they make these swings where the, the club goes down, the divots are way too deep yeah. and the club never quite gets, doesn't exit the sand nicely. So what you've got to try and do, or certainly if you went to the range or a tournament and watched some actual good players hit bunker shots, their divots are all pretty shallow, like fairly even, and just like almost taking the top layer of sand. And I think you've got to th think a little bit about getting the club up and out of the sand once it's hit the sand quite quickly and almost like feeling like you're gonna put that club in your pocket. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just gonna help you deliver the loft Hit, hit it up in the air, hit it higher. Um, um, what about like speed? Because I think so many amateurs look at this shot and think, oh, it's just there. And like, actually I hit my 60, 80 yards not more, so I don't actually need to hit it that hard. But yeah. they forget like the impact with the sand is taking like a lot of the power away and you've got the club fist so open. Yeah, yeah, you've got to hit it quite hard. This length shot may be only 18 yards, but I'm sort of swinging this as if I'm going to hit a 50 yard shot. The sand is a cushion and the sand slows the club down. So you've got to go in as if you're going to hit it much further than the flag is. And like you say, you know, it's so open. We're basically playing with an 85 degree loft club here, <laughs> which you, when you strike the ball, it's only going to like glance underneath it. So the power is sending the ball up, not forwards. Um, so you've just, you know, you've You've got to hit it quite hard. You've got to make big swings, certainly to start with. You know, if you're one of these guys who just wants to get it out every time, you know, you've got to be hitting it sort of, this is like a 75% power swing close to the ball and you, you'll get it out every time. And then, you know, once you, step one, get it out every time. And step two is then figure out how hard to hit it. At that point, you can then start to say, well, if I go 40%, how far does that go? If I go 50%, how far does that go? And then you can almost like build a bit of a clock face system idea that you might have with your pit, just sort of like distance pitch shots. You can't do any of that until you can get it out every time would be where I would start. So hit the sand in the right place, have a club face that's open enough and get out the sand quickly, as quick as you go in. So you obviously are a good player in theory. So I suppose you probably will do a little bit of technical work just to make sure you're flighting it properly. But what sort of stuff do you do in a bunker to make you sharper at distance control and stuff like that. So what I'll try to do is just get like a group of balls that always play to different pins. Okay. Obviously here we don't have extra, but you could just put like a stick in to give you different targets. And then I'm trying to work on like hitting different heights and also different carry distance. So it's kind of interesting when you talked about like putting in your pocket there, because I like to kind of use my left arm to control like how far the shot goes. All right. So if I want to hit it long, like further, and yep. maybe have it like lower and chase it, I'll like extend my left arm out more. Right. To like get the extra distance. So I would use like your technique on a short one here. Yeah. But then if I wanted it to go a bit further without necessarily taking loads of loft off it, like that's what I'd do. So you could almost play shots to the same flag, but hit one high spinner, one low runner, yeah. and sort of work on your flight control. I've been thinning a few recently, so this is my first shot. So let's see how this goes. Nice. Bit heavy, but it did the job, didn't it? Yeah. So then next, so I tend to go to a different pin. I don't like hitting to the same place all the time because yeah. I feel like on the golf course, you've always got different targets. So let's say I was going like on the line of that bench over there. 
but I would then do that shot where I'm trying to like extend my arm out further. Yeah, nice. So it came out like lower and went a bit further. Yeah. So that's what I typically do and just place different targets. Maybe give myself like a distance I'm trying to hit or like see if I can get them up and down. Yeah. But what I like to do is if I've got to a point where I'm really struggling with technique, I'll take like a lot stronger club. So like I might get like a seven or a five iron out. Yeah. And try to do it with that because I know like if I can get my technique better and hit it out with that, it will be really Yeah, yeah, loads. Of it. Billy Foster says he's got a good story about Seve doing that. And Billy, when he sees or when he's caddying for someone who's not doing very well out of them because he will give them a five iron. It's quite good for like low releasing shots. So if you look back at some of the really old like masters footage, you can see like Nick Faldo actually uses this as like a gen like, oh, get, really? like a nine iron out and play like a low lofted shot. Into the sand, bump, there you go. That's the one I'm looking for. But obviously this you've got to get like a lot lower. Yeah. And like really remember like the arc you're trying to swing it on. Yeah. This is a little bit thicker than the clubs I'd normally use. So see how it goes. But you've basically just got to exaggerate everything you normally do to actually get the ball out. Quite looking forward to this. How many bloopers will there be on this? I hope we include all the bloopers. <laughs> oh, nice. Arguably better than the shot you hit with the lockers. Arguably was better. Maybe that. Maybe this is the point. No, that was pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, I just try and do it to the absolute extreme because then, like, I've got up to the point where I can do this with a five. And yeah. So then once you actually get a wedge back in your hand, it almost sometimes feels like too much loft. Yes. Um, but it's quite a good bit to, like, work from. Nice. Do you want to hit one with a lock now and just... I won't get it out, will see, I? See It'll literally, like, hit here. See how easy it is. Oh, no. <laughs> Brilliant. That's not proof my theory at all, no, is it? No, no. I can't finish on that. <laughs> it's good that, because you really have to... You have to really get low. You have to feel like the arc that the club is swing on. You have to keep the loft on the club, because yeah. otherwise well, it's not happening. You lit it 120 <laughs> when you're trying to hit it 18. So, no, that's good. like that.